I guess, and living on the... So basically my parents met on the same street. They didn't really go far. Um, so, yeah, so this poem is just... I, I grew up in Nigeria from the age of four to the age of eight. So when I came back and then seeing like the changes and all that, but basically I'll get into it. Rain turned tin roofs into steel drums. Streets separated into individual islands. Water treacled into potholes, forming swimming pools. As a child, my cousins and I would run to the open gutters. Legs crouch peering into the landscape, watching these large rats build plastic yachts and elevate themselves to kinghood. But grandma's voice carried this storm that reeled our bones back from the gutter's jaw. She hated playing fishermen every time we accidentally fell in. And down the road, five times a day, the mosque calls people to success. And even further down, the churches praise Jesus through outdated speakers. As evening glows, the aunt who owns the restaurant across the road turns the Afro beat up. And one by one, the usual drunks lounge around plastic tables, sipping beer with suya. Youths file into my aunt's kiosk like an after-school club, handing a scrunched-up Naira for fizzy drinks in tall glass bottles. Her box TV lures in the usual Bollywood addicts until the screen goes black and the neighborhood descends into darkness. Mother's voices echo through the hollow, translucent corridors, carrying the playing children from the edge of the gutter back to their mother's wombs. Generators hum violently as lights begin to flicker in some houses, projecting moving silhouettes of families. And both my grandparents live on this road. The same road my parents first met, and in between walking to both houses, my eyes see a million pictures. Teenage girls carrying the weak survival on their head. A mother with her two kids running towards the T-junction. A cutie with bulging muscles pushing a wheelbarrow as Lagos heat condenses on his forehead. And Nana always prays that my cousins and I will prosper. Our lips reverberate the amen to a prayer that holds a thousand candles. And on some morning, my grandma pushing her wheelish chair across harsh concrete is my alarm clock. She's unable to walk, sat out front watching the youth she nurtured become parents. Occasionally, her eyes become glassy, her memories a motion picture on repeat. And I'm always twisted in my memories of her. The days she played fisherman, she was not the most patient person, always knew what to serve us as baits when we disobeyed her. And even when we knew the hooks were there to lure us in, there was comfort in knowing she was the one at the end of the fishing line. And I'm mesmerized from across the wooden chair. I want to solidify this bond before she becomes one with the earth. I want her to hold my hands and reel me back to her youth. Show me how she met Grandad. Show me what my father was like as a child. Take me back to what Nigeria wasn't even Nigeria. Use that image to paint the missing walls of mine so people will stop asking me where I'm from. But Grandma always tells me to leave her alone. She's tired of me selfishly trying to open up the expired cans of worms. So I nod with defeat, turn my gaze back to the street, and continue writing my story. Thank you.